It says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Verse 2. Are you there? Through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Amen. Let, let's read verse 3 together. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Amen. Now, these uh, letters written by the founding apostles and fathers of the church to the uh, rest, to the body of Christ, contain... Uh, especially in the beginning of the letters, a general summary of what Christianity is about. All right? So Peter sort of summarizes, and he says, according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who has called us, to glory and virtue. We have been called to glory. We've been called to virtue. Whatever it means is definitely not a physical thing. Amen. Amen. Glory is not something you can buy at Mobile Mart. And virtue is not something that's for sale at a shell shop or at uh, any of the shops that we have or the market. Okay. So you can sense a spiritual nature uh, or something spiritual is being spoken about. Then in verse 4 of 2 Peter 1, it says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these we, might, we Christians might be partakers of the divine nature. Amen. What is that? We are supposed to partake of a certain nature. Amen. You know, again, this is a spiritual thing. It's not something tangible per se that you can hold or buy or sell or have and hold and you see back to our scripture where we are looking at again in Ephesians because we are looking at a closer walk with God and you notice he says blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now, today I want to emphasize the spiritual nature of Christianity and the fact that belonging to God or belonging to Christ is belonging to a spiritual family and involves you receiving spiritual things you see, because most of our members are poor people all over the church and so on, I mean all over, people who believe in God and people who go to church, largely are poor people. This is one of the reasons why some people have a problem when offerings are received and then they see a pastor driving a nice car or whatever, they feel that they are taking all the money from the poor people to en enrich themselves. Well, uh, let me go on and explain a bit more to you. Because most of our people are poor, when you preach the gospel, the real gospel, and you preach about the things that are in the Bible, at a point, the pastor looks as though he is not relevant, you know, or he is not practical or he is not uh, really helping the people. Yeah. Now, in the olden days, uh, to be an ambassador, you had to be one of the closest friends or associates of the king. So, for the Bible to say, for the Bible to say we are ambassadors of Christ, all right, uh, you must know that it was a very high and special calling. Even today, 
to be an ambassador right you must be quite close or at least you must be in the same political group if you notice when npp came into power they changed virtually all the ambassadors because an ambassador represents something he represents the government he represents the people i mean the, the nation that he's been sent from and he represents a particular government i remember uh, once i was talking with the uh, we're talking with the uh, ambassador the american ambassador and she said when i was coming uh colin powell asked me to do this and uh, ensure that they helped democracy in ghana and do this and so on and so forth and so i realized that she was not here with her own mind but she's here carrying out the mind of the secretary of state or whatever they call it a foreign secretary which, which is the foreign secretary uh, you know there she was carrying out his 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 wishes and and that colin powell is also carrying out the wishes of president bush because he appointed him you understand that that's what an ambassador is ambassador is somebody who comes with the mind of america to stand here if he's an ambassador of america live here and then carry out the wishes of the one who sent him do you understand that is an ambassador now if that ambassador were to turn around and later say that no you see those of you in america you don't understand what is going on here so we want you to know that we are not going to take instructions from you anymore and we are going to be independent we are going to do whatever we want to do do you think that ambassador will keep his job and supposing the government uh, says okay we are we are removing you from there then you also sit in the embassy and say no the embassy belongs to me we are taking over Ghanaians say that we are taking over this embassy do you see how absurd it looks how crazy it looks when you take it into the secular world it looks so foolish uh, let's say the Ghanaian ambassador to uh, 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 Kenya he says he won't uh, he won't listen to whatever because Kenyans are suffering and we need to really help Kenyans so he's taking over the embassy and sometimes when it happens in the church it's, it's amazing you know that people can even support or think of something like this but I mean it's it's an unfortunate reality so a pastor is an ambassador of the lord you see to the people but you see when you are sent to people one of the easiest things that can happen to you one of the easy things that can happen is that you can become sympathetic to the people you've been sent to do you see because you are with them and so if you don't take care you will fall in love with them and then you will see their problems a little differently from the person who sent you and then sooner or later you will you will now not carry out the wishes of the one who sent you but you will be carrying out what you think is practically helpful for the people on the ground how many understand what i'm talking about it's easy and this is what happens to us as ministers i'm telling you what happens to me as a pastor you know when i stand in front of poor people you get and i stand in front of needy people I stand in front of people who need jobs who need help who need i mean visas you know what what do you feel like doing you feel like giving them the visas you feel like giving them the jobs you feel like doing anything you can do to to help them you see so then you begin to have the pastors we the pastors who have been sent by god who is god is a spirit god is a spirit god is in heaven and, and there are things in heaven and there are spiritual things spiritual blessings not physical blessings spiritual blessings which he wants us to be ambassadors of and come and tell the people about the spiritual things and the godly things and the things of god and the nature of god and all the things that we are supposed to have but when we when we are sent and we come and see the poor people that we've been sent to and they look so tired and they look so hungry and they need husbands and they need wives and they need children 
and they need solutions, they need pieces. Then we, we, we become so moved by the situation that we begin to change the message a bit. <laughs> Are you understanding what I'm talking about? And then we begin to turn the message. Then we, 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 we feel that, no, let, let me, uh, they look depressed. Let me motivate them a bit. Let me say something that's just encouraging. So then we just have encouraging messages. Then after a while we look and we say, yes, you can have the Bible and so on, but if you don't have money in your pocket, what's the use of a Bible when you don't have money and you can't eat? Or what's the use of a Bible in your hand when you don't have money to take transport to come to church? So let me teach them how to get money. And gradually, we have very high-sounding reasons to change the gospel message from a simple gospel message into a message of economic empowerment. I was, at, I was with some pastors and they were talking about, you see, we need to empower our people economically. Economic empowerment. That's why, and so gradually, we become more and more uh, uh, teachers of success. You see, because success is not a bad word. Success is a good word because it can be applied in every field. You can be successful politically, successful economically, successful spiritually, successful in the church, successful in every way. You get it? So you have, uh, you can be said, so we become teachers of success. Listen to me. We become teachers of, of prosperity because we need people to prosper. We become teachers of economic empowerment. This is how come pastors are now invited to speak at banks. In banks. Yeah. This, house, this is how pastors are now invited to speak to uh, uh, financial institutions. I was invited recently to speak to a financial institution. <laughs> because we are seen as people who have now messages that are health, economic things, financial business, and so on. Leadership. <laughs> and, and you see, and the, the reason why even that impression has been given is, is, is because, you know, we have, we have, we have, our messages have, bec- we have, we have sort of tailored our messages at a point to, to suit the needs of the people because the obvious needs are financial needs. I mean, when we come and we need a miracle, the thing we need is a miracle. We need financial miracles. How many want a financial miracle? Raise up your right hand if you want a financial miracle. I mean, if I came to church today and I was coming to teach you about, look, how to develop, you know, financially. How to move from good to better. And how to move from better to best. How to move from good to great in, in your finances. How to let your finances go. I put on the television one day, I saw somebody messages. Money come to me now. That's the title of the message. Money come to me now. You know, money comes. How money comes how to improve, you know, how to multiply, and so on. And, I mean, who, how many want money to come to you now? Raise your hand. So, if you're a pastor and you, you teach, the subject is, money come to me now. I mean, it's an exciting message. You understand? It's an exciting message. And you cannot, not that you cannot blame the pastors, but you can easily see how we become teachers of these things predominantly i wouldn't say that it's wrong no no it's not wrong but in terms of the emphasis or oh, what's the main thing because so we also need to teach these things but what that should not replace the gospel are you understanding what i'm saying you know just like if i want to be a, a doctor i need to learn many many things i, I cannot just learn uh, uh parasitology because there are more things than parasites parasites are things like malaria parasites and uh uh, what are the, some of the parasites? Rosemary, tell me some parasites. Uncle Seca. Uncle Seca volvulus and what else? Trip, Treponema pallidum. Is that no? Triposoma. Okay, and what else? HIV. HIV is not a, a, a par- <laughs> parasite. It's a virus. Oh, okay, let's say even virology or even microbiology where we're learning about viruses and bacteria. There is more because hypertension is not caused by a bacteria. Do you understand? Diabetes is not caused by a parasite. And many diseases, psychiatry is not, a mental problems are not caused by 
parasites. They are caused by so many. So I can't just let, if I want to just learn virus, then I should become a virologist or a bacteriologist. And so in, in the ministry or in the church, we can't just learn one thing. We have to learn all the things. But you see, when you see the main need is chloro, I mean, uh, malaria, a doctor should not just be somebody who just knows only about malaria. Otherwise, you are not a doctor. You are a malaria killer or something. <laughs> are you listening? So I'm just trying to make an excuse or help you to understand why sometimes in the church you see that we are preaching in a certain way. Because when we want to talk about what's really in the Bible, the word God, because Jesus said, don't lay up treasures on earth. Jesus said, if you have food and raiment, it's enough. Don't try to get any more. I mean, if we teach these things, like, hey, what are these messages? You know? But I want you to understand today that it is important for us to understand that Christianity is a spiritual thing. And that is why we read here, it says that according as, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. The thing is a spiritual blessing. In Christ, uh, in heavenly places, in Christ. So even God is even looking at your position as being in heavenly places. Not even in Ghana or Nigeria or Sudan or any other such place. But it's a spiritual thing. Christianity is spiritual. Christianity is not a financial religion. Can I have an amen from somebody? Do not come to church expecting to know how to be rich. Do not come to church with the mind that I am going to get more money by giving an offering. We give offerings now for the wrong reasons. I'm not saying you cannot give in order to get. You can give with a mind to get. But there are many more reasons why we should give, including because you love God and because you believe in God and because God has saved you and he, he, you love him and you, you want to serve him even with your money. But not just that I want to give so that I will get this. It's not a nice relationship if all that you relate is because of what you are going to get. You should also give just because we want to help, we want to do the work of God. We love God and God has done so many things for us. So we decided also to give to him and to support like King David and Solomon did. So, so but we come to church and we, we need to know that Christianity is a spiritual thing. And that I, as your pastor, am a spiritual leader of you. And that my work with you has to do with spiritual things. And that if you get blessed financially and all those other ways, which you will, that is not the main thing. He said, if you seek the kingdom of God, these things will be added. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. I want to show you something there. Matthew 6. Matthew 6. I want you to read with me. Are you there? From verse 25. It says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, yet for your body, that is your legs when you are tired walking, in terms of getting a car, what you shall put on. Is the life, is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment. Now listen, listen. How many will agree with me that this verse looks not practical today? I mean, it doesn't look practical. Don't take any thought for your life. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it looks extreme. So how can it be that the leader of this religion, let's call Christianity a religion, his words look strange to his followers. So who are his followers following? Huh? The leader of Christianity, which is Jesus Christ, who is leading us. How come that when we read what he has written, it looks strange in, in the church, which is the group of people who are following Christ. When you read Christ's words, he looks like an extremist. Hey. 
How many know that people rebel against extremists? Nobody wants an extremist. Even the Muslims, they, will, they all claim that these people, Al-Qaeda, whatever they are doing, killing and bombing, it's all extreme. That's not Islam. They will tell you. Nobody wants extreme extremist, uh, a, 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 an extremist leader. So it doesn't look normal. Take no thought for your life. Don't think about your life, okay? What you eat. Don't think about what you drink, okay? Don't think about what you put on, okay? Okay? <laughs> strange. In the church, it's strange. It should not be strange in the church, but because we are so, what will you wear? What will you eat? What car will I drive? This verse looks strange in the church. But God's word and God's help for us was to help us spiritually. And that's what we should take consolation in. And rather what is happening is that people are becoming disappointed in the church when certain problems are not solved. Maybe God didn't intend to solve those problems. He intended to give you heaven. And he intended to bless you in heavenly places. But that's one too you can't see. Then it goes on, it says, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not. Neither do they reap, verse 26, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. So God, Jesus, are you telling us we should be like beds? I mean, a bed, a bed doesn't have to rent a house. Lord, I have to rent a house at uh, Dansoman. Lord, I have to rent a house at Kwashiman. Uh, Lord, the beds, they don't rent, they just go and sit in the trees. So Lord, when you compare me to a, to a bed, I don't think you are very sensible today. Lord, I'll hold you responsible for not me, me not having accommodation in the future for these words that you have misled me with. Lord, I'll hold you responsible. Somebody once wrote to me, said, he'll hold me responsible. I said, wow. <laughs> so you will hold the Lord responsible for not, be, not prospering in life in future. Because he told you not to think about it. Mercy. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? That's 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Eh? Why? Ladies, why? Why? Raiment is clothes. Why are you thinking about clothes? Eh, ladies, ladies, why? Why? Jesus said, don't think, don't think about what you wear. Just get up and put on something and come. Eh? <laughs> You see, it looks strange for me to preach that. I've not heard any women's ministry leader coming to teach this message. She cannot. Because the women's ministry is organized by dressing and having clothes. <laughs> In fact, you cannot easily have a successful women's program unless you give them some special dresses to wear. And you see, the people who said, we, when we did the women's with direction, especially Takradi people, they said they don't have money. When you go and sell books, especially, they say, we don't have money, we don't have... But when it came to the clothes, hey, they bought everything. No credit, they ordered for more, they paid everything. The people who said they don't have money. Zambia. Zuzé. <laughs> Verse 29, And yet I say unto to you that even Solomon... No, verse 28. Why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. One day, I was talking to a, one of my pastors, and I was saying, I was, I was leading a meeting, and I said, you know, we have to serve the Lord. We don't have to think of all these things. Do you know what, you know what she told me? She said, Bishop, you see, you, your father has money. <laughs> your father has money. That is why you can say what you are saying. But for some of us, if we don't work, we can't make it. And you, your father has money. So straight away, this does not apply. Yeah. So you see why? So we cannot even preach these messages. Yeah. If a pastor is telling me, <laughs> then what would the church member say? Hey! <laughs> Limousine. <laughs> what would the church member say? Huh. 
So I remember pastors, you know, you say, and they have this nice sound word, economic empowerment of the believer. Social transformation of the church. Relevance. Prosperity with a purpose. <laughs> you know, you just embellish it a bit and then we are in church. Just take what is in the bank and just add one or two words and you are in church. <laughs> I tell you, take what you get a motivational speaker and you are in church. Look, let me tell you something. The fact that there is truth in something does not mean that it's right. One of the speakers who says a lot of, uh, if you like, about 90% of what he says is not, is correct. You'll be surprised. It's Farrakhan. If you like, listen to him. Most of what he says is correct and is true. But it's a little bit that is not true. And you can have a whole plate of rice and stew and it's all good, but there's a little bit of cyanide spot in it. And it will still kill you, even though a lot of it is true. And when the devil came to Jesus, he told him, uh, when the devil came to Jesus, he used the truth to establish his lie. So the fact that there is truth in the messages does not mean that maybe it's a, it's a good message or it's the right message from the Lord. So listen, yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of what faith? Little faith. This is the definition of little faith. Christians with little faith are Christians who are thinking about what you wear, how to live, what you will do. And I didn't say it, but Jesus said it. Little faith. This is little faith. So what people have been calling a faith message is actually a little faith message. The message of little faith. To have your mind concentrated on how to eat, what to get, how to get money, how to do this, how to live. It's not faith message. It's little faith. Real, if you want faith, we talk about taking up a cross and allowing people to beat you and allow yourself to suffer and suffer loss, suffer persecution, suffer the loss of all things for Christ. That's faith. That's, we are getting, Bible says by, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Choose esteeming rather the reproach of Christ to be greater riches than the pleasures of Egypt. And the Bible says, and, and, and he forsook Egypt, and he endured as seeing that which was invisible. He looked at invisible things, not visible things. He looked at the invisible. And faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. And not the evidence of things that are seen all around. That's faith. So little faith is this kind of thing that we've been having in the church. And if we had great faith, we would, we would go to villages, we would go to towns, we would send pastors there, they would go there, there would be churches springing up everywhere. People would go to the Afran place and to the north and to the east and to the south and everywhere that they need to go because there will be great faith, faith to believe in God, faith to do his will, faith to do his work. But the church is enveloped in a cloud of little faith. Looking for little money and clothes and cars and visa and this and that. And all our testimonies are about money. Because the ambassadors, you see, we the pastors, we are affected when we see you. It's just like an ambassador. He can be affected by the people that he's leading. And the people will come around him and say, hey, you are a leader. Look, rebel against this guy. Rebel against these people who said you. They don't know what's happening on the ground. And you as an ambassador... You must be strong to still say the message. If somebody tells me, you, your father has money, that is why you can say such things. You can see that you ask if I'm preaching, I would not easily like to preach certain things because I'm affected by what the people are saying. But look, I want to show you a very terrible indictment that Jesus is about to give on, 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 on all of us in verse 31. He says, wherefore take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? I mean, many times he's repeating this thing. Wherewith shall we be clothed? Or how will it be? 
verse 32 for after all these things to the gentiles seek for your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you in other words Jesus is saying that when you follow him it's not that you will be deprived of the, these things following him does not make you deprived but it is what you are believing God for what your focus is on what are you thinking about all the time what are you working for what are you sacrificing for but he didn't say he would take them away from you but listen this is the part that I want you to see he says that for all these things do the Gentiles seek that is why he doesn't want you to seek and live that way and he wants you to seek and look for spiritual blessings And he so what are the spiritual blessings that we are talking about? Because, I um, yeah, I don't want to say, if you give me shoes and car, I think I'm happy with it. Yeah, I understand you. And that's why I'm trying hard not to be influenced by the people I've been sent to, but to be influenced from above by the one who sent me. And tell you what he's saying. He says he doesn't want you to look like Gentiles. But which, which group of people can we say that look more like Gentiles than any other group? Huh? The church. Look, some time ago, if, if they told you that this is a Christian sister, she, she's in script SU. She's been in SU for all these years. You immediately know that she's a virgin. You know that she's a virgin because she's in SU. Za. <laughs> but if, if they tell you that this person is in Lighthouse or this person is in Central, or this person is in Winners Chapel, or this person is in uh, uh, Power for Christ Evangelistic Ministries, or this person is in Angels Delight Ministry. You will be more asking how many boyfriends have you had rather than whether you are a virgin or not. It's more of how many, and how many abortions. Which is the life of the world. We are, we are just like the world. And Jesus was telling us to have a certain mind so that we will not be like the Gentiles. Have you never read where he said, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate? God wants his people to look different. If you want to learn how to be different, let us learn it from Muslims now. If there is any group of people who are very different and show themselves as different, the religion I will recommend is Islam. I recommend you to see. One day I was standing somewhere, there were a lot of us there. We were just chatting and laughing. Then I saw a Muslim brother, it was time to pray. Oh, he doesn't care who we are. He doesn't care for one second who is there. But you and I, the prosperity Christians, when we are sitting at Papaye and Nando's and what have you, whether you see a Christian bow his head up and say, let us pray, shall we pray? We are also here. Let us bow down our heads to pray. You will not see that. You will see some quick, blessed, bless our men. Or you see us eating as a did you pray? But I look at that Muslim brother and he was down. We were all there. He didn't care. Is that how they sit? Or how, how do you sit? You have to cross your leg. I don't know how to cross my leg. Either. And then, you see that the guy was praying like that. Three, he doesn't care. He didn't care. So I called some people. I said, look at him. He's not ashamed of what he believes in. Amen. Amen. He was the only person there. The only person. He, he was different from us. We Christians, we are so much, even if a Christian is in politics, you won't know that he's a Christian. He tries to hide it all the time. Is it not true? But not the Muslims. They will tell you, me, I'm an Alajia, and this is what I'm supporting. And they stand for whatever, they, and you see more of their people will be coming in. But we, we are more inclined than, oh, I am an Ewe, so my brothers and sisters from Ewe land must come. Not that I'm a Christian, 
the Christianity has gone down. And it's because we the pastors, we are afraid of you and we are teaching you what we know you won't like to hear. In the end, we are giving birth to a group of people who are so similar to the world. You can't see the difference between Christians and, an, and, a, and, a, and a believer. Christians are going to fight. Are Christians not fighting? Huh? You listen to them talking. One day I was talking with one Christian. He was saying, he said, if, 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 uh, if, uh, if somebody slaps you, uh, he said, you don't turn the other cheek. You cut off his hand. You know, this was a pastor. He said, you don't turn the other cheek. You cut off his hand. Because Christianity looks weak. It looks like a weak religion. It doesn't have the natural strength. And we are like unbelievers. How many of us will, will say that you are, you are virgins, you are not married? But how many here are not married? Raise your hand if you are not married. Don't be shy to raise your hand. How many of these women in the hands are virgins? Or experienced veterans? With different, different people. When you talk about thieves and liars, how many of us don't tell lies? We are just like the unbelievers. One of our brothers went to the prison to preach. But when he was preaching, then some people were shouting, mercy, atonement. And then, then they were shouting, ziza, zo, something. They said, hey, there are some current members right in the prison. One brother, he came from prison, he was telling us how much they used to give him this food, a small milk tin of whatever. He said he was in prison for five years. He said, church I think he was even a shepherd or I don't know what he was. You know, it, doesn't, it almost doesn't mean anything. The fact that you are a Christian. There's almost no difference between a Christian and a non It's because of these kind of messages which are just non-spiritual. It's like spiritual things are too abstract. But we need to understand that we are spiritual beings. It is a spiritual church. And so you hear the church say, those spiritual churches. Have you not heard somebody say, those spiritual churches? It's like to be spiritual. It's bad. It's inferior. <laughs> it's spiritual. And then you hear them telling a Christian brother or sister, hey, you are too spiritual. Hey, spirit. They will call them spirit. Hey, whatever. Past spirit. Sister spirit. Hey, as for you, hey, you are the only one who doesn't have a boyfriend. Hey, this and that. A brother, he said he packed his car. Not a brother, I don't know if he's a brother. He packed his car at a church, not this uh, church, another church. He said, no. Why, why is he packed? He said, oh, every Sunday I pack my church here because after church, when they close and all the young girls are get passing, I will get at least one person that day. So he packed his car as a, a trap to receive some sisters. You have born again Christians, you are not married, you are taking pills, you have condoms in the house, you have this, you have that. At church, they went to do a, a blood donation. Blood donation. You know what I'm going to tell you. Blood donation. <laughs> not any a church, uh, this one. charismatic church. The person, the lab, the person from the lab was telling me, he said, look, a large percentage of the blood from the church was HIV positive. Divorces. Just like in the world. People are divorcing. And so on and so forth. We fight and when the world looks at us and says, ah, you see, this church, these churches, this and that. Listen, I came today to tell you, you better listen to me. Christianity is a spiritual thing. And I am ministering to your spirit. You better start to look for spiritual blessings from today. Because he said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Spiritual. It is a spiritual thing. Spiritual. The Bible, reading of the Bible. 
That is why the church, that is why, <laughs> when I was talking to one pastor, he asked me, do you have a snack, do you have a snack bar in your church? I said, snack bar or snack square, whatever. I said, no, we don't have. He said, hey, then you are losing a lot of money. He said, that's the best business. Then he said to me, one pastor friend advised me to have a snack square. He said that that's where you get a lot of money. And I said, oh, we have a bookshop. <laughs> a bookshop. We have a bookshop. We don't have a snack bar. <laughs> no, I, I, and what I'm saying is sad. And it's like the snack spot, even here, so that you see that the bookshop is empty. There's nobody. And then, when, one day I went to the bookshop, I told them, why, why have you put these Bibles up here? He said, no, 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 they told me, no, no, Bishop, we can't put them here. I said, why can't you? I said, all the Bibles are here. So no, 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 we can't put them. They will steal them. I said, they will steal them. Oh, yeah. The church members will come and steal them. They will come in and they steal. Then they told me, one day, how many Bibles were stolen? Twelve? Two Bibles. And then we are doing an exam, transform your pastoral ministry. And people will come and steal. Seventeen of those books were stolen from the bookshop to write the exam. You see, it's a, to become a pastor. <laughs> it's a good message I'm preaching. It's a good message, I tell you. I need a stadium for this message. This is breaking news. Listen, Christians, Christians steal Bible. Me, somebody has stolen my Bible from this church. That's why I don't leave my Bible alone. You come and you steal your pastor's Bible and you are in the church. Why? Why? So if you employ somebody like this to count your money, to do this, to do whatever, there's no difference. And our churches are large. We have a lot of people. And we boast in the fact that there are so many people in the church. All kinds of characters are in the church. Men of little faith, carnal men, people who our messages cannot frighten them. One day I went to a certain man. Let me preach. I'm going over time, but I'll preach. Listen. I went to a certain man. I went to a certain man's house. He was actually a chief. Then as I, as I sat in the, I sat in the house and then I crossed my legs. Then when I crossed my legs, I said, hey! I said, what is it? I said, we don't cross legs yet. I put my leg down. <laughs> so, after a few minutes, I forgot what I was used to crossing my legs, so I crossed my leg again. Then let me say, hey! We don't cross legs yet, put your leg down. Then, I forgot again, I was put, then I remembered, and I put my leg down. Then the, ch- the chief said to me, he said, listen, I want you to know, over here, an educated man, I worship the river. See the river that passes by my house? I worship it. It's my God. That's what I worship. I said, wow. And he said to me another thing. So in the end when we left, but I told him, Jesus Christ is the son of God. So we left. Some Weeks later, I happened to go to a church. Who should I see in front? VIP. I mean, he's a member and an elder of the church. Sitting in front there. With his... There, there was the man, the chief, or whatever. A chief member of the church sitting in front there. Our messages can never frighten such a person away. But the messages of the church should be like the message of John the Baptist. Who warned you to flee? Sinners and vipers and generation of snakes. But rather, we take pride in having all kinds of politicians and sinners and other people. I'm not saying politicians are sinners. Sinners, politicians, they're all different groups. Some politicians are sinners, some are not. All kinds of people fill the church. And the whole church is there. You've never seen a money grabbing, money grasping, eh? silver and gold seeking group of people like charismatics. 
and, and he said there, the God who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings, where is your Bible? Where is your prayer? Where is your speaking of God for true spiritual things? Where is the tape that you buy and listen to the word of God? Where is your concordance? Where is your Christian book? Where is your time when you wait on God? All that we are after is a visa and a money and this and that. We paint our lips and we put on every kind of... And you can't see the difference between a Christian girl and a non-Christian girl when they dress and they are coming. And they have certain dress they wear to church. And when we are not coming to church, we don't wear those dresses. And you, I met, once met a certain sister and she stopped and said, ah, I don't want to meet my bishop here because of what I'm wearing. Because we are almost naked. Stand up, my time is up. I want you to lift your hands and begin to call on God. Call on God, call on God. Say, Lord, I'm turning around. I'm becoming a spiritual person. I'm becoming a spiritual. Listen to me, everybody. Look, look at me for a moment. The Bible says, and the rich man died. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. The spirit of the man was still alive. In fact, spiritual things are so real, you cannot imagine. The Bible says, when the poor man died, he was carried. That means that the spirit of the person and what was in the person was the spirit of the man is so big that you need angels to carry the spirit of the person. More than one angel. To carry the spirit of the person up into heaven. Your spirit is the real you. It's time for us to develop spiritually. Next week I'm going to be sharing with you how to develop your spirit. How to develop the spirit. How you can develop the spirit, the spiritual side of your life. Lift your hands to the Lord.